Welcome to 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay. 8% off, link in that description, and you know what to do. And you know what this is, an update to the H2C review video that we put out not that long ago. And in that video, I had mistakenly identified Bamboo's bed heating strategies as the reason for my PLA not sticking to the bed. That was incorrect. And just foremost and upfront, Bamboo and community, I apologize for coming to an incorrect conclusion. So back from form next, reading all the comments, trying to figure out the best way forward. I put out a short where I talked about uh, heat soak testing and using my thermal couple and stuff like that. Let's dive into why that was not the reason for why my PLA prints weren't sticking to the bed. To do this, we I have to get on this stool because we have to look inside the machine. And this has been heat soaking at 100 C for roughly an hour and a half. And at that one hour and a half, I would assume that everything has stabilized and we can get accurate readings with the instruments we have on hand. And what we have on hand is a Fluke 289 with thermocouple. We also have the trusty Timu thermal imager that I used in the original video. And I picked up a FLIR 1, connects to the iPhone, it provides a thermal imaging way of inspecting houses. It's kind of like an inspector's tool. So originally in the video, I had set an emissivity value on the thermal imager to 1.0, which is for lack of better terms, a perfect emitter of heat. And nothing is a 1.0 as, as far as I can tell. Most of the time, what people do is set it to 0.95 to get readings on the bed. And if we do that, we, we get a certain number, but I've also, well, here, let me show you. So you can look inside the bed, thanks to this little camera I'm holding, and you can see a blue piece of tape. That blue piece of tape is holding the thermocouple from the Fluke 289 meter. And next to that is an unstretched piece of black electrical tape. First, let's, let's take a look at the thermocouple. So again, this has been on the bed for an hour and a half at 100 C. The thermocouple has stabilized at this temperature, 91, 90, in thinking that, my guess is this is incorrect because a thermocouple, just like any instrument, has to be calibrated. And my guess is this thermocouple needs to be calibrated because if you look, there is something called offset. If it's not reading the correct temperature, you can calibrate it and then set that offset. So the thermocouple, unfortunately, isn't providing an accurate measurement of what the bed temperature is. So we can power that down and we can remove that from the equation. The FLIR imager that I hook up to my phone has a couple settings. Let's see if I go into those. Emissivity. So I can set a 0.95, I can set a 0 0.8, 0 0.6, or a 0.3. And it says the mat setting of 0.95 is recommended, and that's what a lot of people have said they would use in order to judge what is what is happening there. So so it's it's giving us a reading of 91, 92. If we if we go over here, we can definitely see where the heater elements are. What I've been told is the black electrical tape at a 0.95 is what's the most accurate. So if we hold it over that, it is a consistent 104 to 105. This is going to be the most accurate representation of what is being emitted heat wise. So next to it is blue painter's tape, which I've read has an emissivity value of 0.92. Now 0.95 is gonna be close, and uh, using the FLIR, it's giving us a 102. In talking to Bamboo about this issue, they had said that what they want used on their bed uh, for an emissivity value is 0.91. So we can bring out this, so with 0.91 being the emissivity value that Bamboo has specified, it tells me that the bed is 95C, 96C, not yet 100C. But if we bring it over to the blue tape, we get 103.C, the black tape, we get 107C. And this is with an emissivity value 
of 0.91. What this all demonstrates is that no instrument is perfect in reading the values and everything requires calibration, but I think that it says 100C on the screen and I believe we are within that range. And with what I can tell with the infrared imager and the FLIR device, we are consistent. What this proves to me is that the bed heating strategies that Bamboo has implemented and the H-series machines is, is valid. So again, to Bamboo and everybody out there, I apologize for coming to that incorrect conclusion based on the information I'd had at the time. But still, my PLA wasn't sticking. I had tried on this machine to do the bench bin in PLA. I got success at PETG because PETG and textured PEI, they're like this. PLA doesn't hold as well to this as PETG, and apparently in the bench bin, it really didn't hold because all the wheels knocked off. I didn't know what to do. So while I was at Formnext, a package came in and it was a new textured PEI sheet from Bamboo. My Bamboo rep had sent that because I had talked about the adhesion issues that I had had with the machine with him and he said, here is a different bed. I didn't think a new bed was really gonna be the solution to the problem, but apparently it is. First, I washed the bed with Dawn dish detergent and hot water in the sink and dried it off with a paper towel, making sure not to touch any of the surfaces with my grubby little fingers. Once it was dry, I put it in the machine and I loaded up 50 of this little eagle that I was making for a friend who was gonna give them out to, to people. I hit go and not one of them broke free. Not the little wings, not the little tails, not the feet, nothing. I collected those, put them in a box, and it just hit print again. I didn't clean it, I didn't wash it, I didn't do anything. And sure enough, all 50 of these eagles stuck down like they should. I was like, this is the solution to my problems. But wait a minute, I should probably try the eagles on the old plate. So I took the old plate and I washed it with Dawn dish soap and hot water, making sure to not touch any of the surfaces after I dried it with a paper towel. And I put it in the machine and I hit go and two of the eagles broke free. I, I couldn't have scripted this. Two of the eagles' wings and feet had broken free. This was the old plate that was prepped the same way as the new plate. So all I can assume is that I had some sort of defective textured PEI plate that isn't holding on to PLA material like it should. Now that that's out of the way, uh, I'd like to talk about this really cool thing that I've been trying with the H2C, and that's integrating the Z Polymers Tolomer with the Polymaker PET GF15. These materials seem to play extremely well together, and the Tolomer itself with the PET GF15 using beam interlocking finds a crisscross pattern within the model that really adds some strength to it. I had been talking with Mike at Formnext. In fact, we put out a video on this and it got a lot of views because it's a really interesting topic. Being able to make composite materials that can perform as well as advanced polymers or even metals. I've been playing with this and I just made a simple rectangle uh, and, I, and I integrated the tolomer using beam interlocking. I printed them with the blue because I like blue. And then we took it to the vise in the shop at home and we went to hit it. The standard PET GF15, we hit it with a hammer and it shattered. And this is with, I believe, two or three perimeters and 50% cubic infill. I mean, it had a fair amount of material in there and it was strong, but it catastrophically failed when hit with a hammer. That's what it does. The, the stuff with the tolomer load in it, it bent and it's still, I can't do much with it. I can't break it in half. The Polymaker PET GF15, this material is $29.99 a kilogram when I last checked, which is not that expensive for a polymer that can behave in this really cool way. 
And then once you beam interlock tolomer into it, you're actually laying the fibers in situ, like Mike said, and that's giving you some really crazy strength that the material itself doesn't have. Plus, a failure mode that isn't catastrophic in nature. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I've printed these. Uh, some are 50%. And some have tolomer. The hammer worked on the blue stuff. I'm going to see if I can snap this with my own hands. Oh, I hope it doesn't hurt. Okay, so. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is the non this is the non tolomer. This is the non tolomer. That is 50% infill with cubic. I think this is a tolomer because it's got some hairs on it. Okay. Here we go. Okay, this is the Tolomer. This is the Tolomer. I cannot for the life of me. Oh, geez. And that's cool. Granted, Tolomer is expensive as a bleeding. Tolomer is expensive as a material because it, it, it it's not just PLA. It's not PET G. I mean, this is an advanced polymer. This is. This is something that, that you should do research with, and that's why they're looking for applications with it. And if people have really good ideas and they email them, sometimes he will email back and say, that sounds great. Let me send you a roll of a tolomer. This, this Polymaker PETGF15 prints excruciatingly well on the H-series machines from Bamboo. But man, with the tolomer inside, beam interlocked, it is... It is next level. That's my update with my time with the H2C. All I can do with you is just be honest with what I think. It just so happens this time, what I thought wasn't correct. And again, I apologize. But H2Cs have shipped. I see people have gotten them. I'm really curious to see if you've got one. If you have, what have you printed with it? Plus, Tolomer beam interlocked with that Polymaker PET GF15. Seems really interesting, and I would like to know what sort of applications you think that could serve because there's going to be tons of functional prints that once you add uh, in situ fibers from Tolomer to that get that advanced strength. I don't know, like materials are the future and I just love it. Well, listen, thanks for making it this far because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, composite all the things, and as always, high five.